Hi, I just wanted to do a short video on the fourth axis for the Tormac uh, 1100 machine. I've just done a run of parts in this uh, option of the fourth axis, which is the uh, super spacer, the six inch super spacer. And it's just a couple of little things I've learned that I'm happy to pass on. Um, they come standard as part of a, a, a kit or a set with a, um, a six inch three door chuck. Um, for this job I've just mounted a smaller chuck and used some floating, what I call floating cap screws, that's cap screws screwed through to T-nuts um, which uh, have clearance on them and, and you can hold a piece of ground diameter in the chuck and tap it till it's running perfectly true and have a, a very accurate um, way of holding your part repeatedly. Um, it's good to have a small chuck because then you've got more clearance in, in this area with the spindle, uh, sometimes if you're holding small parts, so that's why I used it in this case. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about, I've, I've mentioned in a previous video the uh, splashback that I've got here that's just absolutely brilliant for keeping swarth out of that area down there. Um, and it also works quite well with a 6 inch super spacer, it just fits in there. But I mount, needed to mount the uh, fourth axis to the extreme uh, left hand side of the table um, in order to clear the stepper motor when it's in this direction when I'm, for safety purposes, when I'm referencing the X axis. So you can see it's clear there by about a centimeter or um, uh, just over a quarter of an inch and, and in order to do that I had to sit the super spacer right on the end of the table and in order to do that I've tapped a hole um, for memory a 10 millimeter thread in that rib of cast iron that's here. I didn't want to put a really, really big thread in there and weaken it so it's quite a small thread. I think that in Imperial is about a 3.8 thread or something like that. But I cut some special nuts that are the same size um, across flat as the nuts that I use. The front, which is a conventional um, sized T-nut and bolt going through that just fits under there. So that's quite convenient. You do need to, I did need to machine just a few thou off the top of a bolt so that it would slip in underneath there and um, it's a nice tidy way to hold it quickly at the extreme end of the table and the stepper motor clears the column. Oh, while I'm here I've got a uh, the good thing about the stepper motor, motor is it has a big bore through the middle which is really handy for holding parts um, and I've used my lathe stop which is just a piece of aluminium turned up and because there's no thread to conveniently hold that bush in place I've got a wedge which is drawn out by a cap screw so Slip that in there, tighten the cap screw, which draws the wedge out and locks that bush in place. And then I can adjust the bar in the middle, <coughs> which is the spindle stop, in and out till I find the right position with this grub screw, which has got a soft insert fitted in the end, a piece of copper or aluminium from memory. Um, and that means that you can quickly place your parts in the chuck to the same position every time for production runs and save a lot of setup time. Just reviewing my video, I think I said the good thing about the stepper motor, I mean the good thing about the super spacer, is it's got a big hole through the middle and um, that is not available to you if you go for a uh, rotary table type. Um, the reason I chose the 6 inch is because it's small enough and light enough for one person to, care, to carry. 
carefully carry on and off the machine and that saves a lot of time. Um, just another thing to review in that first clip, the, the thread that I've used is a 8mm, so that's more like a 516 because I really didn't want to weaken this um, uh, section of cast iron through here. But that's enough because you don't need a great force to grip the, the base plate of a uh, fourth axis or vice down because you're gripping over a big area. That's the, um, the other uh, T-bolt that's holding the other side down and I just cut the nut that's the same size across flat so that I can use the same spanner and just quickly tighten it up in place. And it's a good way to fit the um, fourth axis on this end because it allows you to have the cable here. In this case I've just got it coming up through that eyelet and around the back of the machine. I don't think it's wise to unplug these when the machine's powered up. Um, just quickly while I'm on the uh, Super Spacer if you're considering it, I actually completely dismantled the Super Spacer down to every last little part and washed it all out in kerosene and um, inspected it carefully and the components are quite well accurately made. Um, the, the factory is quite capable of doing that. The design's good, it's a copy of an American designed um, fourth axis or, or a rotary uh, dividing head. Um, but I, I have to say that the, the assembly quality was poor and there was dirt and swarth and chips inside it that I needed to wash it all out in kerosene and um, lube it up and carefully assemble it and adjust it. Um, and I'm really glad I did that because it wouldn't last too long otherwise. So I'm afraid that's a fact of life with low cost product. You can't really blame Tourmark for that. They're trying to source these these parts at a fair price for us which is brilliant um, but it's probably worth dismantling it and cleaning it out. Um, there aren't deep oil reservoirs within this type of super spacer there's just little oil passages here here and here the, these two this is this is the shaft that turns reasonably quickly and it seized up on mine it was full of swarth uh, but when I cleaned it out and lapped off the, the seized up shaft um, and lubed it and put it back together. It runs beautifully now. Um, so each time I run it, I put a shot of oil with an oil can in those two oil uh, ball bearing entry points there. And because you need to keep that full of oil um, for every run, there, there isn't a big reservoir of oil in here. Um, but other than that, it's, it's a brilliant little unit and it's uh, manhandleable and with a nice big hole through the middle. Just on the subject of a spindle stop bush, that's it all dismantled there. Um, that's the one I, I've got that I've removed from the super spacer which is um, the one I also use on my lathe which is a sort of mark one um, but there's an even easier way of making it occurred to me after I built it and I've used this on my dividing head but this is what I would probably use next time it's just a piece of acetal, but you could use aluminium with a couple of slots cut through it. And you put just put one grub screw in it, and that one grub screw um, tightens on the sliding shaft through the middle. And also, after it's done that, it then swells, uh, by tightening it up, it then swells the diameter through, through there. And, and locks it on the inside of the bore. So a very quick simple way to make a spindle uh, stop bush if you don't have a threaded hole in the end is just to have a, a headed uh, part like this with a couple of slots in it and a grub screw in the middle. If it was aluminium you'd need to cut the slots uh, around three sides and just have it pivoting but uh, that would probably be slightly better um, I just made a quick one out of a acetal to get me out of a hole and it worked really well so that's a tip I'm passing on. Um, to hold this black back splash guard in place I now just use two urethane um, little buttons in there that are just pressed in under compression and you can hose in underneath to clean out under the slot and if you want to remove it you can lift it up with your tea, lift it out with your T slot cleaning plate remove the whole back guard.